So let's go ahead and take a look at the individual voice tabs. We've already gone through the randomizing page, the template page, and kind of how the performance page works. But let's go ahead and check out these individual voices. So for this exercise, I'm going to be focusing on this third voice here, which is our dark saw bed. Now with any uh, of these voices, as you can see, they're all different colors because each one has an effect, rhythm, bed, and texture. If I change this to a texture, it will turn to green. If I turn it back to bed, it will turn this kind of orange tan color. So this way you can kind of know what style of sound you're working on just by the visuals. Now each section, uh, this is kind of like a parent group is what we call it. We have pitched beds, pitch textures, pitch effects, non-pitch rhythms, non-pitch textures, non-pitched effects. With each uh, category, you can access the entire internal sound set uh, within uh, the foundry. Now we don't recommend doing direct sound sets because there's a lot of effects and internals that get applied when using this randomizer page to each of the voices. But if you know what you're doing and you feel confident working with, with this and going, look, I know exactly what bright bode can sounds like, and I know how I'm going to be working with that, that's okay. Um, for this instance, I'm just going to pull up my, uh, just like a synth buzz song. And with all of these voices, each voice is independent from uh, another voice. So each ADSR has a different independency, as you can see between these two voices. This voice has a slow attack. This voice has a hard attack. Um, for those of you who don't know what an ADSR is, uh, it's a way of shaping the volume of a given sound. So that's a nice hard attack and it sustains that. Now if I want to give it a softer I can. When I release the note, if you notice here, I release the note. Well, now that's a really long release and it takes a long time to decay versus, oh, it's still decaying, excuse me one second, versus just this. I can have it be very choppy. So that's tack and release. I can also um, change how it holds or decays or sustains. In order to activate hold and decay, I have to change the sustain value. This is not a time, this is an actual value. So this would sustain at 100%. So it just stays at 100%. Or if I wanted it to sustain at 50%, now it's kind of sustaining at 50%. Let me turn off the compressor so you can hear that a little bit better. So now it's sustaining at 50% versus not sustaining at all. It'll only play through the hold and the decay. Now hold won't do any kind of volume off information. It just plays and then turns off. Whereas decay will give you a little bit of shape to it. See how that goes out? So I can kind of shape how the sound works by just using the envelope controls. This is standard across any standard synthesizer or um, sampler program that you can use. That's just how the ADSR, and in this case it's AHDSR, works. Um, so whenever you're applying a template here that's like long attack, long release, it automatically applies an attack and a release to this. Now one quick thing to note with this ADSR is I can actually shift click and apply um, an attack to all so I can set, say, oh, I want everything to be a heart attack. Well, I hit shift click, and now everything is a heart attack. Or I want everything to have a hold and a decay, but no sustain. I can just shift click these through, and now everything has that same value. So use shift click on this ADSR to kind of give you a quick way of applying an ADSR to an entire sound. It's a, it's a really fast way of doing it. Of course, volume is volume of the actual instrument. We have a morph assignment, and if you noticed in the previous video, I went through these different morphs. You have the XY morph, which is standard on, on the whole entire thing, which means that the instrument will change in volume based upon this XY pad. So you can set it to XY pad, or you can set it to CC range. Um, if you hold down shift with any one of these numbers, you can get finer resolution versus just not holding down shift and not getting any resolution. Now we've preset a bunch of CC ranges, velocity ranges, and key ranges already on each of these. So you don't necessarily need to go in and set ranges. We've set ranges for you already, um, but you're more than welcome to. 
So what's cool about this velocity range, I can set up an effect where if I want to hit it at a higher val value, I can have an effect like a big hit uh, happen at a higher range. In this instance, this particular effect, because it's on the first voice, is set to a lower range. So if I play really soft, I'll get the sound. And it's a, it's a neat way of kind of building and shifting your instrument around to try to give it uh, as much breadth as possible. Key range operates the same way. These are all MIDI note information. So CC60 um, is a C. So as soon as I hit 61, now I'm playing Cs. And then always on, doesn't matter what's going on, it will always play. So I can move the XY pad, pad around and it won't do anything because this voice is selected always on. And again, through the templates, you're able to quickly say, okay, well, everything's going to be in key range, everything's going to be in CC range, everything's not going to be morphing at all, so it's going to be always on. Or you can set it just back to the XY and get back to just using what's on the front page. Um, I can turn on and off keyboard tracking. So what keyboard tracking does is as I play a C, it will play a C. Um, if I don't play a C, if I turn off keyboard tracking, it'll play whatever root note I have selected here. So if I hit listen and press C, now it's changed to C3, doesn't matter what note I'm playing, it will always play a C. This is really useful when you're dealing with textures that you don't want to have um, changing in pitch. Um, so you can just kind of... Or just have a really low rumble. Same goes for mono and poly. So um, this is mono mode. So mono mode doesn't matter. It's not playing two notes at once, it'll only play that one. Versus poly mode, I can play chord. You can lock the voice from here if you want. Now notice if I hit the randomize button, it doesn't matter because the, this randomizer lock only applies to the actual randomizing page. Now you can set up different parameters on this instrument. So we have sequencers, grainers, bodies, compressors, distorters, delays, rotors, panners, and the actual sends of the instrument. Now I'm going to talk about the sequencer in a completely other video because there's a lot to deal with with this sequencer. But for, for now, let's talk about the grainer. Now what the grainer does is it takes little tiny slices of the sa sound. So, so say this sound right here. Oh, let's find a good sound. Long, dark, focused bass hit. Now what I can do is I can grain this so I can take little tiny slices of this and kind of stretch the sample out a bit. So we get this kind of cool, like, sound again. It's a completely different sound now. Let's talk a little bit about the filters. Uh, we have our standard low pass, high pass, notch, and a 3x2 filter. The 3x2 filter is a little bit more complicated of a filter. Uh, if you know contact well, uh, you'll understand what the 3x2 filter is. I won't go into it greatly in this, um, in this video, but it's essentially a formant filter. So you're able to kind of design a, a fundamental cutoff frequency and then uh, shifts from that frequency or octave displacements from that frequency. So if I have a sound, I can do 
Yeah, <laughs> my lovely singing. I'm so sorry. Um, and then change the resonant and type and various things. If you know what you're doing within contact and you know the three by two filters that contact have, we allowed this as an opportunity for you to use. Otherwise, don't worry about it. But low pass, high pitch, high pass and notch are the most common filter types. Um, low pass essentially will let low frequencies pass through. Resonances will apply a bit of kind of a, a ringing, almost feedbacky style tone to it. Uh, high pass is the opposite. It allows high frequencies to pass through. This isn't a low sound to begin with, so let's find something that's a little bit more. There we go. And then notch filters are, they just take a very specific band and kind of out from it so it's allowing both high and low frequencies through but it'll it'll carve out a little section in the middle so let's take a look at some of these different body types now if i apply it through a different body it'll change its sonic ability quite drastically so let's say i go through an auto heart body or a ceramic canter clay pot or deep guitar body or even a dog belly you can drastically change just based on this body type the sound so if you're really not quite happy with the sound try a couple of these different IR types and of course you can randomize through lot of these and just get a lot of different different timbres and and styles to the sound compressor this is just a sim simply way of, of kind of making the instrument a little bit louder or more present um, they're able to get through and kind of just make the timbre or the amplitude uh, variance within the instrument a little bit more squashed and, and compressed um, as well as maybe give it a little bit of attack or or whatnot um, if you notice here when I'm turning things on and off, it actually does change the, um, the, the color here. So you can kind of quickly see what's on and what's off. Distortion, there's three different types of distortion. There's the regular driving distortion. There's a lo-fi. So you can change bits and sample rate, as well as add more noise and color to it really useful for a lot of percuss percussive things. And then you're, you're screaming. And then we also have delays. If you notice up here in the corner, this shows you how the duration of the delay in length of 30 second notes. So if I have four 30 second notes, Of course, it would help to have the master power button on. So this is based off of a master tempo, either given by the DAW or by standalone contact right here at 120. So if I have four 30 second notes, those are eighth notes versus if I had two 30 seconds, those would be 16th and one 30 second would be a 30 second. So we can get kind of a nice slap back e echo or I can have a nice um, you know, like a dotted eighth. And I can change the feedback of it, how long the, de the delay lasts, as well as the overall panning. And if it's dry and wet, obviously if it's 100% wet, I, it's not gonna play any of the initial sound, it'll just delay it. Whereas if I add some of the dry back in, I can, I can hear what it's doing and you know, do that. The rotor is based off of an old Leslie type effect. So it gives you that kind of it has two different speeds. You can bounce between the low and the high. And then also the distance of that. 
Now, Panner's a bit unique. Um, Panner's a really cool feature. You can actually apply LFO to the pan. So you can get a nice wobbly back and forth. Turn it off. I can start placing instruments based upon the pan. I can also switch to surround mode. Now in surround mode, you're gonna to need to change your output structure here. Um, instead of being just a stereo channel, you're gonna to have to add in a, um, a surround channel. So that's six um, channels, because that's what a surround channel is. You'd have to apply it to whatever your sequencer is. And now I've got the surround mode. So I'd have to change this to my surround panning. So this is separating out my uh, low frequency, um, my sub channel, if you will. And then I have my regular channel here. So if I just quickly move this up, I can change the azimuth is where the sound is located. And obviously we're not dealing in surround yet, but now it's going to just in almost entirely the rear channels versus the front channels. So if you have a surround setup and you're able to do surround, this will do everything from, from your left, right, um, uh, rear, left, right, center, um, and then your LFE channel. So it's a fun little thing to work with. You can change the LFE volume, you can change the size of it, you can change the divergent, how um, how wide the variance is. So high divergent will give you a very um, separated field. Um, the sends of the instrument will actually send the overall um, sound to the delay or chorus or flanger or phaser that are set in these master settings here, which we'll go over in a different video. Um, but that's where these sends are. And then again, the returns of those are here. So that's pretty much it for each ind individual instrument tab. Be sure to check out the other video on the sequencer and um, also what happens in our settings page.